Greetings, Internet. Welcome to Aaron Plays. In this episode, I'll be continuing the German third turn of Russia Besieged. And we're currently in the September October turn. When this will be the second impulse. In the first impulse, we roll for weather, and it is clear for the first and the second impulse of this turn. Now, the prior episode, we did the first impulse, including the combat. And in this impulse, uh, this episode, we'll do the second impulse plus combat. Um, at the end of the last episode, I need to check some rules regarding the uh, railheads, and they are converted at the end of each individual impulse. So, yes, we are now ready and willing and able to begin this impulse, starting with the movement phase. With that in mind, um, this attack not working, not even again across the river was a bit uh, unfortunate. But let's see if we can actually surround this, these, these, these units by these units and these units again attacking here now with the air force that's available in this area. So I'm not sure if I should launch the attack here rather than here. Because the defense is stronger. Right? Well, it's the same as an eight and eight, but here we can get three stacks attacking rather than just the two here. Theoretically increasing the odds. Right, so I've got to remember how far units can move in the second impulse and try and not get carried away as I have done in uh, previous turns. So we know that the Germans can move um, with their armor and their motorized infantry, um, four hexes, four movement points, and their infantry can move two. Whereas the Axis infantry can move nothing. Not quite true, some of the, the Finns can move two. Axis mountain can move one. Axis armor can move two. Okay. So with that in mind, um, I don't think we need to move the Finns. We don't want them to get, be involved in an attack on Leningrad. We will move this infantry up to Tallinn and take that. Um, We still need to keep this invested. We don't want to attack it, so we'll move to there. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Keep the infantry moving forward. One, two, and again, that will... That, move it up to there. Construction. One, two. Um, we don't really, well, should we launch an attack on it? Why not? One, two. We can go there. One, two, we can go there. Okay. And again, that can move to there. This is as far as we've gone so far. Now, what to do with this force here? Push on to, to Moscow, to the armor. Can we surround any of these Soviet units, make a pocket? Let me have a think. We've got to think how far I want these units to move over towards Moscow and potentially, or potentially surrounding these stacks. We know that the Soviets are going to get at least six units in Moscow, just reinforcements. And replacements, 
maybe seventh and eighth unit, which means that the Soviets could counterattack. Potential. So leaving armor on its own up here, extended, could be not the right way to go. Um, however, surrounding this stack, and this stack, or even attacking one of these stacks, um, could be useful. So we know we can't get around all these guys because the maximum movement for the armor is four. So one, two, three, four is about here and here. So we can't create pockets of all of them, but we can create a pocket for some of them, hopefully. So moving the infantry up, we could possibly engage in the armor. One, two, three. Yeah, you see, even with one, two, three, four, we, we maximum we can get. We've got to stop on the zone of control, so if we go into there, um, can we get what's the most massive stack? So what to do? I mean, we could engage this and move to here. Move some infantry. It's very difficult to actually, you know, with the second impulse to surround these boys, isn't it? Hmm. Let me ponder. Okay, on the southern area, we'll pause on the northern front at the present moment. We are going to attack this hex rather than this hex because we can get three stacks in against that hex. So we'll move that into there. That into there. And Hungarian armor into there. To that okay, and then we'll bring these back. One of the flying troops to there, and bring this armor to here. So, with all those troops and such forth, we have three to one attack on that hex. So, we'll put a marker on there to remember that. And we're going to be flying maximum air, air support, all four. All those aircraft will be involved in that attack. And that will be a blitz. OK. We're not going to be able to launch an attack on that town, the town with the unpronounceable name. And I've got to think about supply for next turn also. Now, the weather, it's going to be November, December, is either going to be mud or snow. And that hampers the supply situation. Like mud, mud or snow. Right, okay. Remembering at the present moment, now that we've moved into here, we need to extend the rail supply line as far east and south as possible. So we have moved through all these hexes, so these are... Axis controlled, but we haven't constructed on them. So this rail has marker here, clone. So it was there, so it's gone to there at the present moment.
Need something to go into that hex. Remaining armor can go in there. One, two. I'm not sure about the cavalry. Can they move? Axis cavalry can move one movement point. Okay. So that will extend that to there. That's from that junction. Now, see, I'm not sure if conversion from there to there. Yes, we've been through these hexes. But we haven't really from a junction. So I believe, no. Right. So we don't want to go too far down this side. So one, two, one, two. Now the axis mountain unit can move one. Italians. Italians will remain there. These two infantry here, German ones can move. Oh, two movement points. It costs an additional movement point to move across the river. So, well, we've got the rail now. So we can move some units by rail. Can go all the way up to here. Yeah. In the second impulse, there is a restriction on how much many units can move by rail. So that's on three. So we've moved two. That's fine. up to the river. This guy's going to be hopefully out of supply. We don't want to attack him, but we can move forward there. Again, we don't have to attack across the river. Move him to there. Sends that to there. Okay. Two to there. I'm going to move that armor into there, which then extends that. The reason I'm putting that marker there is to remind that this link here is still not converted. I'll need to check that. I do need to check that. Must admit, I'm a little bit unsure, but the rule 7.24, a player does not have to physically move the unit through each non-rail junction to take control of it. I mean, that hex, all these hexes have been gone through. So I read that 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 now be all marked as converted converting I believe maybe one of the game designers or one of you guys will know better and can put it in the comment section below the actual video once it's done I'm unsure but I think that's correct right okay so we're doing a mass attack on this.
that hopefully getting a breakthrough, which will then link and then surround these units here. So we'll need something to link to. Um, I think it's worth doing a blitz attack on this stack here. Okay, so we're trying to break breakthrough here. One, two, three. Right, okay, so we want one of these actual armored units that were here. And now one, two, three, four. Break the breakthrough there. Achieve the encirclement there. Okay. That needs to be brought into there. Two. Two. We definitely need to take control of some Lensk. I mean, we had, but um, re garrison it probably is a better word to use there. Okay. So, what's the. There's 11 in that stack. Eight and seven is 15. No, that's 20, 28. Hmm. That's only two to one. That's not brilliant. Air support wise, we have one Stuka from here and one Stuka here. That's not great. If we bring this guy back, we can get three to one. But that's then. We are relying on getting a really good advance three. One, two, three. Don't control. Don't control. Risky, but we do need that. Okay, so bringing him in there. These Soviet units are big. So against this chap, that's 13. You're not going to be able to amass that much. Not enough for a significant attack. Hmm.
interesting what to do. What was only control? If we put the zone of control around him, he's both one, two, three, four, we can get here, cut that railing. He's obviously getting supply through here, so that's not going to help. So I think we need to go in. Yeah, that's as best we're going to get there. Right, so clone that. That goes to there. Flip. Okay. We got anybody else we need to move? Doesn't look like it. So the combat phase. So if we, that'll be seven to one. So here we've got 11 and we are attacking, so that's three to one. And here, no, that was 13, and we were attacking with 9 and 6 is 15. That's another 9, 15, 24, plus another 9, 33. That's 2 to 1. Okay, so ideally, at the blitz table, the lowest blitz you can get is three to one. So we're going to throw in some, and this one here currently is. Three to one, but we'll throw four air at it. That'll make it seven to one. You throw three air to it. Yeah, okay. So we'll decrease that by one. Put that one to there. Put that one to there. And then the lens gear force into there. That now increases to a three to one. That increases to a five. And that one increases to a six. Is there anything else that I need to attack? Oh, this one here. 12. Four to one. Okay. I'm going to start with the big attack in the bomb. This is a six to one, and it's going to be a blitz attack. Modifiers. I can't see any. So armor and armor cancel. Don't get any modifier for the river. It's already doubled. It's defense. So, yeah, six to one. Straight, but we're looking at the blitz table. Yeah. So the Germans have got one leader. We ideally want at least a four. 
Amén. Seven to nine. Yeah. I think we will put Moda into the attack. There he is. Little chappy. He's the last German leader. Six to one. Plus one. Ten. For an after better. DE advance three. Could not ask for better. Right, okay. Let's sort this out. One, two, three. Those markers. And model has been used. Okay, now I need to check Blitzkrieg advances. Okay, so I can temporarily overstack in that hex. Uh, the infantry that I move in there can only, that's as far as they can go. So let's move all those three infantry in there. The armor, all those will go in there as well. And yeah, we don't want to put any more. We'll put that one more armor there. Okay. Don't want to put any more infantry because the infantry can't move any further. Now, the result we got... was advance three. The armor can advance and ignore infantry zones of control. They have to stop as soon as they come across an armored zone of control. So with that in mind, let's see what we've actually got here. All these can advance. Yeah, even the Hungarian armor there. Now, ideally, what I do is surround this guy and obviously create the pocket for those. You can go three. So, that'd be, I think that actually counts as a, the first sex advance, one, two, three. So that's about as far as we can get. There. Yeah, I'm sure the so I'm advancing. Yes, advancing. One, two, three. So that's as far as they get, which does create a pocket of sorts. There. Okay. Not a great one here. They they'll easily get out of that particular conundrum. I can't move, but an infantry unit just needs to come there, then they'll be back in supply. But these guys, yeah. Okay, so the attack here is at five to one. Now the question is, do I want to do another Blitzkrieg or a standard? That means we can just advance into there. Blitzkrieg, we can move it further forward, but I don't think that's really where we're going. So I'm going to do straight five to one on that attack. Oh, is it straight? Um, no, we have a plus one modifier for the arm. It's five to one at plus one. Ooh, getting lucky. We've done the blitzkrieg now. Anyway, 
Okay, so they're eliminated. And we can advance into that hex. We don't advance everything. Infantry and an armored unit there. There we go. Um, and we'll send the aircraft back to from whence they came. Flip. And flip that. Okay. You show that all the aircraft are used. That's a big stack. Okay. And therefore, the last attack coming in here. I oh, know there's one slot. But three to one with a plus one for the armor against infantry in the open. Three. Well, three to one with a three. D1. To better serve step losses, any surviving units must retreat two hexes now. D1 is that. Uh, let's flip that. You must retreat. Zone of control. Zone of control. Let's just check the retreat rules. Yep, according to the retreat rules, you can't retreat into a zone of control unless there's somebody else in those hexes. So these are unfortunately are eliminated too. But you can't advance into that hex. Okay. Turn the aircraft. Well, I think we turn the aircraft incorrectly. Flip him, he returns to there. There's a green base. Ooh. Right, okay. You just that. All right, where's the green air base? Was that there it is? Okay. So uh, that yep. right, okay. So that just leaves this attack here. Now that terrain is minus one. And it's infantry attacking armor, but it's in terrain that's not conducive to armor. So let me just check that rule as well. Currently minus one. Now they get the minus one for the terrain, but not for the armor. It's got to be clear. So it's a four to one attack at minus one. Five becomes four. D two. Pretty much the same as that. So. He's eliminated. Uh, and as he's eliminated, we can advance into there if we wish. No. He'll advance it. Right, so that's the end of the combat phase for the Axis. I don't think there was any others. They're off there. Um, didn't have to attack him because it's across the river, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, I'll convert the railways in the next video. So what happens now after that? The end of the second axis impulse. We adjust rail counters to do that off screen. Terminal German supply statuses. Okay. Uh, I think we're looking okay. Railhead. 
Is that unit? Yeah. On a supply point of view. Um, Yeah, so that concludes the axis turn three, at which point I will end this video. So I hope you've been enjoying it. If you have, hit the like button. Any comments is always much appreciated. And if you haven't done so so far and you enjoy what I do, hit the subscribe as well. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye, Internet.